this tutorial I'm going to talk about basic MATLAB plotting. Uh, we're going to open uh, an M file and dock it into the programming environment. Uh, and here's where we're going to type our, our plotting commands all in one script and then run it at the same time. Now uh, let's save this as uh, file. Save as something like uh, basic plots. So first up we can use the figure function and let's save that basic type basic plots in the command window to run the script and we get a figure window uh, by default it's like it's numbered figure number one uh, I can specify the figure name myself if I put in figure number one I'll get the same thing figure number one and I could also have a figure number two. So this should open up two figure windows, and there they are, figure one and figure two. Now if I want to close them all, I can type close all, and they should now have disappeared, and sure enough they're gone. Uh, I can also add figure handles, it's just a, a number. Uh, H1 will be one, or figure one, and H2 will be two. So I can say close maybe uh, H1. So when I run this, two windows were open, but the first one, H1, which is figure one, was closed. I'm only left with figure two. Okay, so let's we'll, we'll just use one figure window for the moment. Uh, so let's start with before we begin or close everything. So I'll type close all as a function. And uh, then I'll create figure. Create figure window. And that'll be H1. And then we'll do some plots. So before I do plots I need to create variables. So we might have maybe time as a variable, and that will be, it's an array, uh, it can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 perhaps, and maybe the y value will be, whatever, uh, 1, 5, 3, 7, 4. And then I can create a plot, which will be plot uh, x, sorry, let's syntax is x, y, but my x variable is time, my y variable is y, and if I run this, uh, now I should get a plot. There we go. The x coordinates are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the y coordinates are 1, 5, 3, 7, and 4. Um, I can then maybe add a second plot, z is equal to, say, 10, 8, 5, 9, Three, um, and I can try and plot that on the same screen. Oops. Let's copy this line, copy and paste, and um, I'll plot C. Now you might think this would work, but in fact, what will happen is it will plot the first, and then it will override it with the second. So if I do this, all I see is the the Z array plotted, which was ten, eight, five, nine, and three. So what I need to do is to hold the plot. So I type hold on and then hold off. Now if I run this, I see two plots on the same graph. And they're a little bit hard to see because they're both in the same color, the same line style, no markers. So let's do a little bit of uh, stuff to jazz it up. So we have a line spec, which uh, it's a triplet which lets me decide the line style, which in my case I'll make solid, uh, the marker type, which I'll do as a downward tracing uh, facing triangle, and I'll make the color black. Um, just to show you how to find it, if I go to the help, so doc, and I search for a line spec, and it gives me this. Uh, documentation which tells me how to decide the triplet. So I have the line style specifier and I've chosen to have a solid 
Uh, I can have the marker type and I've chosen a uh, downward pointing triangle and the color in my case is black. So other things which I can change are I can set the line width. Everything from here on comes in what's called a, a property value pair. So the property is line width and the value, the default is one. That's what we have now. So let's make it uh, thicker, make it three. I can also change the marker size to be maybe 12. It's going to be pretty big. Let's run that one. So there we see I've changed that for one plot. Let's change it on the other. So this one I will make maybe a plus symbol. I'll make it a dashed line and I'll make it a red, uh, red line. Uh, line with three, that's fine. Marker size 12. So let's run this. Okay, getting better, a bit easier to see. Uh, next thing up, I might want to add some labels. So uh, add labels. Uh, the function is x label, and it will take some text, and it's usually the value and the unit. So it's time, let's say in seconds. Uh, that will work fine. Um, so I can run that and say y label. Uh, it might be I don't know value. We didn't say what the y value represented, so value and units. So you can write whatever you want in here, and this is just a, a user defined label. And title, which will go at the top, I might say my first plot. So let's run that. And what you can probably see, or maybe you can't see, is that the text has been added, but it's in the default font size, which is very, very small. So let's, uh, let's make it bigger. So I can put in some property value pairs, font size. Uh, I usually go for around 32. And let's put that into each of these functions as well. Font size, 32, and same here. Now if we run this, it's starting to look much better. So much more readable. We still see that the X tick labels are a little bit small. So let's try and make those bigger. And the way to do that is a little bit tricky. Um, so the first thing we need to do is to grab the focus of the figure. This is figure one, so I'll type figure one, which pulls it to the front. I mean, if I were to type figure one here, it would pop up on the front like that. So that's what's going to happen. And once it has what's called focus, then I can use the set function and get current axis. So the reason I pull it to the front is this get current axis. The current part is important, and the figure has to be the one at the front, which makes up the current axis. So get, get the current axis gives me the pointer to the figure axis area and then set will, will set its properties and I'll set font size to be something quite large but not exactly as big, so maybe 24. And if I run this now, I see that the X and Y labels are much bigger. Uh, next up, I'll want to set the limits. So the plot just disappeared. Let's generate it again. Um, I might want to set, let's just arbitrarily say, I'll set the x limits from 1 to 5 and the y limits from 0 to 11. So I'll have the function is xlim. It takes a 1 by 2 array, which will be, I said, x limits will be 1 to 5. And, oops. And the y limits, copy and paste that and change it will be from 0 to 11. There we go. So the x limits now run from 1 to 5 and y limits from 0 to 11. Okay, next uh, we're nearly there. I'm going to show you how to add text to a plot. So when the plot's generated, let's just regenerate it, a lot of this functionality I'm showing you can be done manually uh, using insert. So I can insert uh, label, x label, y label, title, legend, color bar, and so on. Um, but it's just easier to do it once you know how to do it uh, programmatically. So let's do it programmatically from here. So we're going to add some text. Um, where will we add it? Let's add it here. So say 2.5 and 9 are the coordinates. 
of the left leftmost part of the text, and I'll say uh, here is can type here is some text, and let's make it big enough so we can see it. Font so the property value pair will be font size uh, twenty four. Uh, did it work? No, it didn't work. And I'll tell you why. Um, because I did it wrong, and I never told it where. I wanted that coordinates 2.5 and 9. Let's try again. Uh, sorry, a different way of running. There we go. Here is some text. Okay, and the leftmost part of the text starts at 2.5 and 9. Next thing we can add the grid. So I could add. Type uh, grid on. You can imagine turn the grid off. You want to type grid off, um, and that will give me the grid like this. Uh, MATLAB sets the grid spacing automatically. Um, you can also have a very fine grid if I have grid minor as well. So the grid is on and also grid minor, and I get this, which is a very dense, uh, fine resolution grid. Even more advanced, we might want to change the tick labels. So once again, we pull the figure focus up, and then we use the set command to get the current axes. And on that current axis, we want to set this. There's two different property value pairs. One is the x tick values. So where do we want to see? So let's say one, three, and five. So uh, no, let's do 1, 3, and 4. It's probably more useful. These are the, the places where I want to see some x ticks, x tick labels. And the x tick labels I want, x tick label, uh, we'll put in a cell array, and that will be some text maybe. It might be, uh, I don't know, make it up. Do, re, me. The reason it's in the cell array is because we can have strings of different lengths in there. So. MATLAB decides to use a cell array. Uh, let's run that. Oops. Syntax error. We're missing a comma. Let's try again. There we go. Um, wow, that's cool. Uh, is that a MATLAB bug? Who knows? So we've got. Strangely enough. I don't know why it's changed the grid size. It's very interesting. Um, that's probably what we were expecting to see. So we've changed the x tick marks and positions to be so the tick marks are now do re me uh, some strings I've chosen arbitrarily and the labels occur at uh, one, three, and five. And um, the last thing up is a bit more advanced. It's about subplots. And what we're going to do is now create another figure called figure 2. And in here I'm going to create some subplots. Um, so I'll type, I'll use some variable to catch the handle. And this is the subplot function. It will be subplot. And the syntax is, I'm going to, in this case here, you can decide whatever you want to do. But I'll, I'm going to do three rows of subplots by two columns. And for this one, I'll index, I want to pick out the third subplot. And I'll show you how to number it in a moment. Um, and on that subplot, I'm going to do some plot something. So let's do time against uh, y against time. And then in the second part of that variable, I'll catch the handle for another subplot. And that will be also on a grid of 3 by 2 subplots, but it will be the sixth of those subplots. Uh, and on this subplot, I might plot uh, time and z. So let's have a look at that. So here's my second figure, figure two, and you see we've got what is space for six subplots, three rows by two columns, and it, they would be numbered uh, index one, top left, two, top right, three, left middle, four, right middle, five, bottom left, six, bottom right. Uh, so this one here was number three, and that was uh, the plot of y, and this one was number six, and that was the plot of z. And the cool thing that we can do with this is I can link the axes together because I've, I've captured 
the labels, uh, sorry, the handles for the subplots in this AX variable. So what I can do is I can type link axes AX contains the handles for those subplots that I want to link and the axis I want to link is the X axis. So now if I run it, um, I can use the zoom tool on the plot and I can zoom in, let's say on the range, X range from 2 to 3 and the plot in the bottom right hand corner will also zoom the same way. So the time axes, in this case it happens to be time axes, the X ordinate are, uh, is tied together on both plots. Okay, one last thing, just a bit about saving. So let's regenerate those plots. So I'll close that one and we'll look at this one. There's two ways to export or save. Um, one way to export is to go to edit, copy figure, and then maybe open a Word document um, and just paste it in. Easy. Uh, it's probably the best way to paste it in. I think it pastes as an enhanced meta file. Uh, the other way, if you're not using Word, is you want to first go to File and Export Setup. And in here, the important thing is rendering. And in rendering, it's resolution uh, DPI dots per inch. And you want to set that to be quite high, so 3 to 600, so you get good res resolution. I usually choose 600, which is probably overkill. I can apply that to the figure, click OK. Then I go back into File and go Save As. And I can choose to save it as, well, if you're using LaTeX, you might want to have an EPS or a, a portable network graphics, which is um, a PNG. Let's cancel that. I want to save it. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, one last thing which I should show you is um, in the figure one, we never set the legend. Um, it's pretty easy. The legend. The function is legend. The names of each plot, uh, there were two, there's the Y and the Z. Uh, we'll just have this would be my Y plot, some text in the cell array, a new line, new row, and maybe um, this is the Z plot. Let's see if that works. So close figure two, that's not the one I'm interested in, and there's my figure one. And I've got a legend in the top right hand corner, my Y plot, and this is the Z plot. Okay, that's it.